Hello everyone, this is lecture 12 in real analysis and in this lecture we are going to prove that the interval 0, 1 is uncountable. We are going to use Cantor's diagonalization process. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel and comment underneath this video to support this work. So before we proceed further, let us recall a few definitions. So these definitions have been discussed in previous videos, which are linked in the description to, to this video. Nevertheless, we are going to recall these definitions here. So a function f from a non-empty set x to a non-empty set y is a bijection if it is both one-to-one -one and on-two. So what does it mean that the function is one-to-one? -one? It means that if we take two points x1 and x2 in the set capital X, if it happens that f of x1 is equal to f of x2, then x1 should be equal to x2. So basically we have this situation, if this is set X, and if this is set y, if, if we have two points x1 and x2 in the set capital X, so if these two points are different from each other, then the value f of x1 should be different from the value f of x2. So this is by basically what it means to be one-to-one. -one. So the function takes different arguments to different values. And the function is on two if for every y in capital Y, there exists little x in capital X such that f of x is equal to y. So if I take a point y in the set capital Y, then there exists little x in the set capital X such that the function f maps little x to little y. So let us recall a few more definitions. A set E is finite if E is an empty set or there exists a bijection f from the set 1 through n to the set E for some natural number n. A set E is infinite if it is not finite. A set E is countable if there exists a bijection f from the set of natural numbers to E. A set E is at most countable if it is finite or countable. And finally, a set E is uncountable if it is neither finite nor countable. So let us recall that our goal is to prove that the interval 0, 1 is uncountable. So in order to do that, we are going to need the following lemma. So let E be a non-empty set. The set E is at most countable if and only if there exists an onto function f from the set of natural numbers to E. So basically what this theorem says is that the set E is at most countable if we can, if there is a function that takes natural numbers to the set E in such a way that it exhausts all of the elements in the set E with its values. So if we have here an example that this function takes 1 to element x1, 2 to element x2, 3 to element x3. So basically this function f is, is on 2 if, um, it, if this function f reaches every element in the set E. So we are going to prove only one implication in this theorem. This is if and only if statement, but we are going to prove only one implication. So let us suppose that the set E is at most countable. We want to show that there exists an onto function f from the set of natural numbers to E. So we are going to have two cases. Since E is at most countable, it's either countable or finite. So in case E is countable, then by definition of the countable set, there exists a bijection f from n to E. And this bijection is an onto function. So uh, in case one, we are done. So in case two, the set E is finite. So in this case, there exists a bijection g from the set one through n to E, for some natural number n. So in this case, we have a function g that is a bijection, and it is defined on the set 1 through n. And from this function, we would need to construct the function f 
that is defined on the set of natural numbers n instead of the set 1 through n. And we want this function f to be onto the set e. So we have this situation here. Our function g is a bijection, therefore is onto the set e. So here we have the set 1, 2, to n, and here we have the set e, and our function g takes the set 1 through n to e, and because this function is a bijection, it is on 2, so here in this list of the values of the function are all of the elements of e. None of the elements of e are omitted here. So for every x in e, there exists m in the set 1 through n, such that g of m is equal to x. All right, so we have this function g, it is on 2, we understand what that means. What we really need to show is that there exists a function f from the set of natural numbers to e. So this function g is defined on the set 1 through n, and we need a function that is defined on the set of all natural numbers. So here is what we can do. At the point n plus 1, we can say that our function f takes the value xn. At the point n plus 2, again, let us say that the function f takes the value xn. And we can continue this way ad infinitum. So in summary, we have a function f that is defined this as follows. f of m is equal to g of m. So the function f coincides with the function g if m is in the finite set 1 through n, and then f of m is equal to g of n, which is at this x n here, this is equal to g of n, if m is greater than n. So this, this is our function, and it is clear that this function is on 2. Indeed, if we look at this statement over here, uh, it really guarantees that our function f is on 2. Indeed, for every x in E, there exists m uh, in the set 1 through n, such that f of m, in this case, if m is, one, is in the set 1 through n, f of m is equal to g of m, and g of m is equal to x by this statement here. So our function is on 2, and this is what we wanted to construct. If we have shown that if the set E is at most countable, then there exists an on 2 function from the set of natural numbers to E, and that finishes our proof. So let us prove now that the interval 0, 1 is uncountable. We are going to prove this by contradiction. So if the set 0, 1 is not uncountable, it means that it's either finite or countable. So it means that it is at most countable. But we have just proven in the lemma that if a set is at most countable, then there exists an on two function f from the set of natural numbers to our set 0, 1. So we have this situation here. Uh, the function f has values in the interval 0, 1, so we can, uh, we can describe these values using the de decimal notation. So f of 1 is going to be 0 point alpha 1, 1, alpha 1, 2, alpha 1, 3. So this alpha 1, 1, alpha 1, 2, alpha 1, 3, these are the digits in the decimal expansion of the number uh, f of 1. And similarly, f of 2 is 0 point alpha to 1, alpha to 2, alpha to 3. f of 3 is uh, 0 point alpha 3, 1, alpha, alpha 3, 2, alpha 3, 3. And finally, f of j is 0 point alpha j1, alpha j2, alpha j3. And somewhere along the line, there will be alpha jj. Uh, we, we wrote it down, these digits, because we are going to use this later. So because this function is on 2, here on this list, we have all of the numbers on the interval 0, 1. So somehow we have to come up with a contradiction. So we are going to use Cantor's diagonalization argument. So we are going to construct a number x in the interval 0, 0 1 that is not on this list. This is how we are going to get a contradiction. So there is one caveat that we need to discuss before we proceed to construct this x that is not on this list, 
and it is that uh, the decimal representation of a number in 0, 1 is not always unique. So, for example, we have the 0 0.7999. If we continue this, uh, all, all of these nines, this is actually equal to 0 0.8. Uh, so, to, to avoid this ambiguity, in the above representations of the function of the values of the function f of j, we assume that none of these representations end with 999 and so on. Okay, so our quest is to construct x, uh, a number in the interval 0, 1 that is not on this list here. So here is what we are going to do. We are going to look at the diagonal here. We are going to look at these digits on the diagonal alpha 1, 1, alpha 2, 2, alpha 3, 3 and so on, alpha j, j. And we are going to use Cantor's diagon diagonalization process, and we are going to construct the number x as follows. It's going to be 0 point, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, and so on. And we are going to choose the digits beta j in such a way that beta j is not equal to alpha j, j for all j in n. So it is clear that this number x is not going to be on this list because if x was equal to some f of j, then alpha j j would have to be equal to beta j, but it's not. So let us write down this argument. So let us define the number x as 0 point beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, and so on as follows. So beta j is going to be equal to alpha j j plus 1, if alpha jj is less than 5, and beta j is alpha jj minus 1, if alpha jj is greater than or equal to 5. So we note that beta j is not equal to alpha jj for all j natural numbers, and also beta j is not equal to 9. Uh, and beta j is not equal to 9 simply because if alpha jj is less than 5, then alpha jj plus 1 is at most 6. And if alpha jj is greater than or equal to 5, then we would be subtracting 1 from alpha jj, so we would never get number 9 this way. So this decimal representation of the number x does not end with 9, 9, 9, and so on. So let us now derive a contradiction. So let us recall that our function f from the, nat from the set of natural numbers to 0, 1 is on 2. So that means that there exists a natural number j such that f of j is equal to x. So f of j is equal to 0 point alpha j1, alpha j2, dot, 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 alpha j, j, dot, dot, dot. Uh, and x is equal to 0 point beta 1, beta 2, dot, 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 beta j, dot, dot, dot. So that's our x. So since these two numbers are equal, the j digits after the decimal point must be equal as well. So we mu must have that alpha j, j is equal to beta j. However, we did say that beta j is not equal to alpha j j. So this is a contradiction which finishes our proof. We are going to finish with the theorem that the set of real numbers is uncountable. And this is because, this, because the set of real numbers contains the interval 0, 1. And the interval 0, 1 is uncountable as we have just proven. So we are not going to prove uh, in all details this statement. We are simply going to state it here. This is all for this video. Please like this video. Please subscribe to this channel. Leave your comments below and be good at math.